Hello viewers, welcome to the video lecture recording of 11th class. Today we are going to talk about statistics that is statistics from economics and we are going to deal with the chapter number 2 of this book that is collection of data. In this chapter our focus would be on meaning of data, purpose of data collection, why it is being so important. Then we will talk about sources of data collection. There are basically two type of sources, primary source and secondary source. Then we will talk about instrument of data collection that is a questionnaire and what are the qualities that a questionnaire must have. Then we will shift on methods of data collection and there are basically three methods of data collection and these three methods will involve using personal interviews. Then we will talk about mailing questionnaire. Then our focus would be shift to telephonic interviews. And at the end of this chapter, we will basically focus on government organizations and institutes which do collect a lot of data for government as well as for other organizations. So, we will start with our topic that is collection of data. Statistics has gained a significant place in modern complex business world and data is the base on which structure of investigation is made. Now, while talking about the meaning of statistics, it means itself data or quantitative information which is capable of some meaningful conclusions. Now, from example, if I say that there are 8 sugar mills in Haryana as comparison to 20 in Punjab or while talking about some another example, 20 percent of the people in the working age group are unemployed in India as compared to 2 percent in USA. So, after knowing and after discussing the two general examples from our real life, it is very easy to define the meaning of data. So, it is a tool which helps in understanding problems by providing information or in other simple terms we can say that processed information is called as data. In economics as well as in statistics we do deal with various kinds of socio-economic problems like poverty, unemployment, regional imbalance etc. So, our aim is not only to find out the cause of the problem, but to also find out the solution of that problems too. But in finding out the solution of this problem, it is the data which helps us in finding out the remedies of the problem and after finding out the remedies, policies and procedures by the government is being made. The success and failure of investigation mainly depends upon quality adequacy and accuracy of data. Now, what is the main purpose of data collection or why it is very important? It is very important because it helps us in collecting evidences for reaching a sound and clear solution to the problem. Now, we will talk about sources of data after knowing the meaning of data that we know that it is a numeric value which help us in finding solution of various kinds of problem. Now, we need to find out how we can collect data or what are the basic sources by which data can be collected. Data sources are divided into two broader categories. The first one is primary source and the second one is secondary source. Primary source. The meaning of primary source can be made more clear by taking a general life example. For example, if we want to know the quality of life of people in our town. For this, we need to find out quality of life in terms of per capita expenditure of different household in area. For this study, we need to collect our data through statistical survey of course, with the help of investigators or field works. This means we are relying on primary source of data. So, after taking the general example of primary source of data, it becomes more clear and evident that the meaning of collection of data from its source of origin is known by the name of primary data. It offers you first hand 
quantitative information related to your statistical study. So, it can be said like this only data collected by investigator for his own purpose for the first time from beginning to end is known by the name of primary data. Now, the what can be the other examples of primary data? The main and the most important example of primary data can be population census conducted by government of India, which includes inclusion of each and every person of our country. This is the perfect example of primary data. Now, after knowing about the meaning of primary data, we should also know that what is the meaning of or what is the secondary source of data collection. The secondary source can be also understood by continuing with the last example. From the previous example, if we want to find out the quality of life of people in our town and we know that this information has already been collected by state government of India or some any other agency, so we can use that information. It implies obtaining the relevant statistical information from an agency or institution which already has collected the data through statistical survey or it does not give us first hand information. We have to rely on the information which is already existing. So, whatever the examples we have quoted out, after that it is easy to simplify the meaning of secondary data. It can be data collected by some any other person is known by the name of secondary data because it is not collected by investigator rather it has been collected by some another person that is why it is also known by the name of second hand data. This is available in the form of published reports. It does not give us first hand information because information is already being collected, printed and published by someone else and we are just using it for our own study. Now, the examples of secondary data. The main example of secondary data can be national account statistics published by the CSO that is Central Statistical Organization or economic survey published by government of India. Now, after knowing the meaning between primary data as well as secondary data, it is desirable that we should differentiate between these two or we should find out what are the main differences between primary data and secondary data. The first difference is on the basis of originality. Primary data is original and secondary data is not original. Why is it so? Because primary data is being collected from its source of origin and secondary data is being collected by some another purpose and by some another person and we are just using it for our own references. Now, the second difference would be of specific objective. Primary data is being collected by keeping a certain objective in our mind and secondary data is not being collected for the same purpose rather it has been collected by some another purpose and it can be utilized by anyone. So, the third and the most important difference is on the basis of cost. Primary data is costly because it will involve much time, more money and more efforts. On the other hand, secondary data is less costly because it has been collected by some other persons and it is already in printed form. So, here we have completed our one topic that is primary data and secondary data. After this, now we will talk about how data can be collected. Data can be basically collected with an instrument and that instrument is questionnaire. This is one of the most common and most important instrument. Before talking about that particular instrument, we will like to give you some example by which we can easily correlate it ki why we need to collect data by using this instrument. For example, there is a manufacturer who wants to introduce a new product or there is a political party who wants to decide about selection of a candidate. 
they will conduct a survey by asking questions about a particular product or candidates from large group of people. The purpose of survey is to collect data. So, what is the meaning of survey? It is a method of gathering information from individuals. And here comes the main instrument that is questionnaire or interview schedule. Questionnaire is one of the most important instrument which is being used by so many researchers in order to complete their research. It is desirable to know what is the meaning of questionnaire. As the name suggests, it is a set of so many questions related to the topic of study. Now, while after knowing the meaning of questionnaire, we should also know that what are the qualities or attributes a good questionnaire must have. The first point and the most important point is limited number of questions. It means that a questionnaire must have fixed number of questions and the number must be limited so that by seeing the questionnaire, a respondent is not showing any kind of hesitation in filling that. The second point is simplicity. Questionnaire must be very simple, easy and lucid. Similarly, the language of questions must be very simple, easy and attractive. Third point, proper order of questions. No doubt, if we are preparing a questionnaire related to some problem or some issue, the sequence of the questions must be properly arranged. For example, if we want to find out or if we want to know that what is the annual income or monthly income of a particular respondent. Before asking this question, we should know that the particular person is employed or unemployed. Now, the next point is no undesirable questions. Obviously, if we are preparing a questionnaire, so we do not have any right to hurt the sentiments of the respondent and we do not have any authority to ask any personal question from the respondent. The next point and the next quality of a good questionnaire would be it must be non-controversial. Non-controversial simply means that the questions must be simple, they must be related to the topic of study and they must be relevant so that it cannot harm the sentiments values of any respondent. The next quality is calculations. Calculations as the name suggests, calculations means we are making use of mathematical calculations or we are making use of some statistical calculations. If we are quoting these kind of questions in a questionnaire, our respondent will be reluctant in filling that questionnaire. So, these kind of questions which involve uses of calculations must be avoided. For example, if we ask about profits and loss of a particular company, these kind of questions must be avoided. Similarly, if we ask about what is the annual income of a particular respondent because we know that the person usually get their income on the basis of month. So, they have to calculate their annual income. So, these kind of questions must be avoided. The next quality is pilot survey. As the name indicates, pilot survey simply means that we are pre-testing our questionnaire. It is desirable to do a tryout of the questionnaire so that if we do have any kind of discrepancy or any kind of problem that can be sorted out prehand. The next quality is instruction. This quality is basically associated with interviewer or the instructor because its main job is to give proper instructions to the respondent before giving him the questionnaire. Each and every instruction must be given in proper manner. The next quality of a good questionnaire is request for return. Definitely, if we are preparing a questionnaire related to our topic and we are, want that questionnaire to be fulfilled by so many respondents, then instructor has to request to the respondents that kindly fill the questionnaire and return it back. The next quality is 
multiple choice questions are most appropriate. Obviously, if we are fulfilling a questionnaire or if we are completing a questionnaire, we do search for various options. For example, instead of asking a student, what is the mode of conveyance you are using for going school? The better option would be, what is the mode you use for going school? Option 1, bus. Option 2, by your own. Option 3, with your friends. And option 4, by using scooter. So, these kind of questions are easy to fulfill from the respondents. The next quality is, the questions should not use double negative. These all essential qualities or attributes must be necessary for the success of a questionnaire. Now, it can be become more clear by taking some real life examples of questionnaire. Now, we will discuss some questions. By looking at these questions, it will become more clear that how a question can be framed in order to get fruitful result from the respondent. For example, if I ask, do you spend a lot of money on books in a month? The similar question can be framed in a logical manner by giving some options. Then it will become like, how much do you spend on books in a month? Less than rupees 200? Between rupees 200 and 300? Between rupees 300 and 400? And more than rupees 400? Now, the questions starting with would not you or don't you should be avoided because these kind of questions may lead to biased responses. For example, if I ask, don't you think smoking should be prohibited? No, this is the example of a bad questionnaire. This question can be asked in a manner like, do you think smoking should be prohibited? Now, while summing up the, all the things we have discussed today, we can summarize it like that, data is a numeric value which helps us in finding the solution of various problems. The success of any investigation is basically dependent upon collection of a proper data. After that, we talked about sources of data collection and these are primary source and secondary source. Primary source simply means that when we are collecting our information for the first time from its source of origin, that is primary data. On the other hand, secondary source of data means we are not collecting our information for the first time, rather it has been collected by some any other agency or any other government organization and it is available in printed form and we are just using that printed information for our study. After that, we talked about instrument of data collection and the most common instrument is questionnaire. We discussed the meaning of questionnaire, that is a set of questions related to our problem of study. Then we discussed some qualities or attributes that a questionnaire must have. So, in our next lecture, we are going to study about ways of collecting data. We will focus on three methods of data collection as well as other methods like sampling and census method. Till then, enjoy reading and enjoy yourself. Thank you.